Kimberly Trowbridge is an artist and the director of the Trowbridge Atelier, a multi-year painting program at Seattle's Gage Academy of Art. Well, I sat down with Kimberly via Zoom to talk about Into the Garden, her first ever solo museum exhibit happening at Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. Kimberly Trowbridge, so great to see you and congratulations on the show. So good to see you and thank you so much, Nancy. All right, so Into the Garden, it started in, in 2018 uh, with an artist residency at Bloedel Reserve, which is a gorgeous, I don't know, 150 acre forest garden a few miles north of Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. So tell us how that show developed from that point to now. So as you said, they have a creative residency program where artists get to come in for three weeks, live on the grounds. And so I did that May 2018, felt totally in love, felt like this is not nearly enough time. I want to dive into this subject matter. And we ended up creating a fellowship program so that I could return in multiple seasons over a period of two years. And then we brought in the museum, Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, as the culmination of that fellowship so that I would be working towards this exhibition. And so it all just fit together really beautifully and kind of naturally. It was just a magic. So there are around 35 paintings, I think, in the exhibit. And yep. they all began, began, underlined, in the style of plain air. So describe what is plain air. Plein air is a fancy Frenchy word for open air. All it means is you're painting outside on the landscape. So not in the studio, uh, you're really kind of in the elements. And so that's a practice I've developed over the last five or six years. And it's been a game changer for me. Painting in nature, you get to hear the bird songs, feel the wind, it is a spiritual experience because you're really having a dialogue with nature. My whole artistic practice right now is kind of the plenar lifestyle in a way. It's like a way of life or a philosophy of like this idea of plenar your life. What if everywhere you go, you are attentive and present and noticing what's around you? That's a beautiful way to put it. Extremely meditative. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely in the moment. How did you decide uh, which uh, specific locations to paint? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, because as you said, Bloedel is 150 acres and all of it is amazing. Um, partly it was practical. So where I was living on the gardens, this little triad of what I call theaters or gardens near that space were the ones that really excited me the most and were easy for me to pack up with my gear and kind of go out to. And so I really fell in love with the Camellia Trail, the Reflecting Pond and the Moss Garden. And they're all very different spaces. Did the immersion in nature in this period of time, and we're talking basically three years, did that change you kind of in how you approach painting? Yes, actually. Um, there was a particular instance that happened early on in 2018 where I was in the Camellia Walk garden. I was painting, you know, really rich colors. I'm a real colorist, I love color and something wasn't feeling right. And I came back to that same site the next day and found myself covering over all of my rich colors with neutral tones. And so I started doing a lot of what are called tonal works or just value-based works, black, white, and gray, which was very confusing to me for a while. But magically, I then learned that from the groundskeeper at Lodell, that Prentice Blodell, who designed the gardens, was actually colorblind. And so I felt this kind of interesting voodoo happening where I was responding to rhythm, form, and shape, maybe more than the actual color. There are three different versions, and maybe more, but I noticed three different versions of the, I think the same tree trunk, all of them interesting. Why did you want to paint that tree or other, um, objects as well, more than one time. You're referring to the series of, it's actually four eight foot panels that are in the show that are of a tree and I call it the Oracle tree. And it's an 
old um, big leaf maple tree with moss on it. And the way the light hits her is just beautiful. And she has this kind of figurative gesture to her that I've returned to again and again. And I do think of her as an oracle. I go to her and I ask her questions. And so through this transformation of color to tone, I really wanted to experience her and other motifs in my show in different times of night and day, but also different seasons. Um, it's just a way of getting to know the motif better in a way. Yeah. A number of the paintings include human figures amongst the greenery. Why did you choose to include people? They're really about putting the body and the sensual human element into nature so that this isn't something that is just being viewed from outside, that it is something um, I'm within that, uh, you know, a fern can brush up against flesh. Um, it's about that sensual experience of being in nature and more specifically being transformed by nature. Now, painters are known for pursuing the quality of light, right? At specific locations. We have uh, Vincent van Gogh moved to the south of France for that reason. Claude Monet famously used um, great use of light hitting the cathedral at, I think it's Rune, I think is how you yeah. say it. Oh, I just showed those paintings to my students <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> so, tell us about the light at Bloedel. Mm. So, well, several of the paintings in my show really hit on late afternoon light. What's unique about the gardens at Bloedel is that they are within old growth forests, very unique. And so, to have this kind of darker backdrop allows for that late afternoon light to come in and those wonderful, glorious slats, almost like God fingers, you know, where it's such a specific shape and shaft of light. And so to me, the paintings that kind of embody that, I call them the Annunciation paintings because it's like where everything is revealed, like that interconnectedness with nature, um, that connection with the earthly and the sacred. And so that that particular time of day is very exciting to me. You know, you were very involved in the installation, yeah, of uh, mm -hmm. the exhibit of Bima. Um, and I was struck, uh, speaking of um, the shaft of light, I was very struck by the juxtaposition of the black and white figures next to the painting of that bright shaft of light coming through yeah. the green forest. So how do you decide what goes where? Mm, that's a good question. And so I was very involved in the installation. I even built a to scale model of the museum um, two years ago that I've been playing with little tiny versions of my paintings um, and moving them around, knowing that when I got in the space, things would likely change. But I really wanted the show to operate in a way that when a viewer comes through it, that they're, it's like they're walking through the garden. I was really thinking about each time you see a painting and you kind of move around a corner that another pairing of relationships would occur in a similar way to walking through a garden where you're focused on one thing and then you turn a corner and a new space or relationship opens up. So I was really thinking about the garden as a template for how to experience the paintings in the show. Well, Kimberly, it's um, a beautiful show. Um, congratulations on it. And um, I can't wait to see it myself in person. And I also look forward to seeing whatever's next for you because you're clearly um, a human with a vision. <laughs> and Thanks so vision. much, Nancy. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. And I'm just thrilled to share this body of work with the world. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you. Into the Garden runs now through June at Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, and you can see a wider variety of Kimberly's work at Linda Hodges Gallery.